Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you three different ways to stroke text using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.20 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here, my GIMP book of layers, and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So quick note, I will be using only features that are built directly into GIMP. There are some plugins such as the gimmick plugin that allow you to stroke text, but just to keep things simple, I'm going to be using everything found directly inside of GIMP. Also, I do recommend updating to the latest version of GIMP. That way you can take advantage of all the features I'll be showing you in today's tutorial. Although two out of the three of these can be used in pretty much any version of GIMP. So let's start off by creating our text. I'll come over here to my toolbox and click to grab my text tool. And I'm just going to to click on my composition, turn on my caps lock key. You'll see I'm using the Canit font here, heavy italic, and let's change the size. I'm gonna go with 300 to start. Click on my text box again, and I'll type stroke. And I'll hit Control A to select all my text. And now let's spread out the letters here. We can do that using this right numerical field here, which is the kerning setting. I'm just gonna go with something like 25. I don't want these being too spread out. Then I'll come over here and in the first tool group, I'll grab my alignment tool, click on my text, and I'm gonna align this relative to image, and I'm just going to center align my text, and now I'll hit the M key to grab my move tool. All right, so we have our text set up. Let's start off with the first method for adding a stroke to our text. So this method is only going to be available in GIMP 2.10.20 or newer, and that is using the drop shadow filter, the newly updated drop shadow filter that is. So what we're gonna do here, we're going to stay directly on our text layer, and I'll come over to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. For starters, this will just put a drop shadow under the text. That's not what we want to do. So over here under the X and Y slider, make sure the little chain link icon is linked. And I'm just going to middle click with my mouse wheel. So the middle mouse click, whatever that is on your mouse. And then I'm just going to erase that. So I'll hit the backspace key to get rid of the two there. Hit the tab key. And so that's going to get rid of the values for X and Y. And you can see that stroke is now moved directly under our text. Next, what I need to do is turn the blur radius all the way down to zero. And finally, I'll come over here to grow radius and I'll increase the size of this. And you'll see that's going to add a stroke. So there's a decent amount of customization we can do with this. First off, my opacity is set to 0.5, so that's why this is gray, whereas the color that we have selected here is actually black. So we can click on this color to change the color to whatever we want. Let's go with maybe this green color, click OK. And then if we wanted to turn up the opacity, we can either just drag the slider to the left or right. So dragging it to the right will turn it up and we can go all the way up to 100%. I'm not really sure why this goes beyond 100% there. But if you wanted to, you could middle click on this, erase this value entirely, type A1, hit the enter key. That just means 100% opacity. I recommend keeping the clipping set to adjust, which is just going to adjust the size of the layer to make sure it includes anything that goes outside it. And you could change the blending mode of the color that you're using of the stroke if you want to. I'll leave this set to the default. A couple other things I want to show you. So let's increase the grow radius here. So right now this is set to circle, which means the stroke around our text is going to be more of a rounded shape if I hold control and zoom in with my mouse wheel. I can change the grow shape here to square. And you can see what that does. It makes our edges more pointed, but you can see it doesn't really do a perfect job. For example, right here, this is kind of a weird looking corner. And as you can see right here, this area is sort of wobbly and then it has a weird meeting spot here, same down here. So not perfect, but you can always adjust the size of this if you want. And you can see the effect of that. And the last option for the grow shape is the diamond shape. And this is essentially going to give you that beveled edge or that chamfered look. So the corners are gonna get cut off as opposed to being pointed or rounded. 
And so that's one of the main benefits of using the drop shadow for your stroked text because it does provide many options here for the style of your stroke. So I'll click OK to apply that. Hold Control and zoom out. There is our first method. The second method for creating a stroke around your text, in my opinion, is going to be the best method. And this is essentially using a path to create your text stroke. So coming back here, I'll hit Control Z to back up and that's going to get rid of that stroke we just created. So for this method, there are two options. We can come over here, Alt click on our stroke text, come down here and create a new layer. And I've already got my name stroke because I did this earlier and I'll click OK. Then I'll come over to the paths tab then I'll come over here and click on this icon to convert the selection area I just created around my text to a path. So there is our path. You can rename this stroke text. I have my caps lock key on. Sorry about that. Now I'll need to deselect this. I'll go control shift A to deselect it, or you can go to select none. Next, what I'll do is come over here and click to stroke my path. So here we have the stroke path dialog and you can choose your stroke style. This is why I like this so much. There's many options here so we can just go with a typical line and that line can be a solid color or based on whatever pattern you currently have selected. Anti-aliasing is just going to ensure a smoother stroke. You could choose the line width in pixels. So let's go with a larger line width. We'll go with 10 for now. And then there's this little line style drop down. And here you have a variety of options. You could change the cap style, which is basically how the stroke ends. The join style, so anytime the path corners on something, like for example, the E right here, you could choose whether you want this to be more of a square shape, a round shape, or a beveled shape. So this is the equivalent of that square, circle, or diamond option when we we're using the drop shadow method. The miter limit is just going to control how far out a pointed corner is gonna go. So if you do go with this pointed corner join style, there may be instances if you set the line width really high where the corner is going to go way out here. The miter limit is just going to basically cap how far out it can go. And then the coolest part of this is you can set up a dash pattern if you want for your stroke and you have various dash presets here. So we've got just a regular line. You can do long dashes, dots, etc. So let's go with some dense dots here for this example. And the last thing I'll mention is that you can stroke this with a paint tool. So for example, if I chose this option, and I went with one of my paint tools. You can see you can use any of these, but let's go with the paintbrush option. It's going to paint with whatever brush head is the active brush head right now. And you can see that by coming over here, selecting the paint tool. So right now we have this brush head. This is for my last tutorial. So it would paint with that brush head along the stroke. But I'm actually gonna come up here and choose the stroke line option. The last thing you need to know before we actually stroke this is I can change the color of the stroke over here by changing my foreground color. So whatever our foreground color is currently set to is what's gonna get painted on here. So if I go with this orange color, that's what's gonna get painted. I'll click OK. So now I'll come over and click stroke. And there you can see our text has been stroked. I went with the dashed line option if you'll remember. So that's why that's showing up there. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. If I come over here, I can unhide the path and that's showing you where exactly that stroke is located here. And this is useful because I can come over to my toolbox, grab my paths tool, and I can click on this path and you'll see all these nodes that are created and I can come in here and customize this so we can basically make the stroke whatever shape we want. So I'm gonna come over here and delete this stroke that I created because I do wanna show you an alternative method for adding a path around this text to stroke. So let's come back here to the layers, come back to our text layer, and now I'll go to layer, text to path, and if I come over here to my paths tab, now you can see we have a path again, and it's added that stroke around our text. Let me hide this path and come back over here to the layers panel. So another huge benefit to this method is you can add multiple strokes to your text fairly easily. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We still have orange set up as our color. Let's stroke this text. So I'll come over and we'll go with a line width of 10 for the first stroke. Let me move this inside the frame and let's change the line style here from the dotted lines to just a normal line. And now I'll come down and click stroke. So there is our first stroke. Right now the stroke is located on top of the text, so I'll come over here to the layers panel. Let's move this below the original text. So now it's behind the text. And next I'm going to add a second stroke to this. So I'll come over here, create a new layer. We'll name this stroke two. 
click OK. We can either make this stroke smaller than the original stroke we just drew, or we can make it larger. If we want it to be larger, which I do in this case, we'll have to move this below the original stroke layer. So now let's stroke on this one. So I'll go to Paths, and we'll click to stroke the path again. This time, let's go with a larger line width. So let's go with 20. And I'll change the color of this so we can see it better. Let's go with the red color, click OK. So now I'll come over here and click Stroke. And let's hide this path. And now you can see we have two different strokes here on our text. So let's come back to the Layers panel, delete those two layers. And now we're back here on our text layer. The third and final method for adding a stroke to your text is kind of an old school method. I don't like it as much because the lines of the stroke itself aren't as crisp. However, it does have its benefits as I'll show you here in a second. So for this method, we're going to come over here and alt click on our stroke layer. And by the way, if alt clicking on this layer doesn't work, you can always go to layer, transparency, alpha to selection. That'll perform the same thing. But once we have our text selected, I'll come over here to select, grow. And now we can grow this selection area by however many pixels or whatever unit we want to do. So I'll stick with pixels and let's say we want to increase this by 10 pixels. I'll click OK. So you'll see that will expand the selection beyond the text and it's going to create this sort of stroke effect. So now what we need to do is create a new layer. So I'll come over here, click to create a new layer and we'll just name this one stroke and I'll click OK. Let's move this layer below the original text layer. So now we can fill this in with whatever we want. So if I wanted to, I could click and drag this foreground color inside the selection area. Now we have a red stroke. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. So I alluded earlier to the fact that this does have a main benefit and that main benefit is that you can add gradients inside here. So basically you can create gradient strokes. So I'll come over here and let's click and hold on this tool group and grab the gradient. On our stroke layer now, I can click and drag this gradient. And because this is a live gradient, we can adjust the midpoint and the endpoints, etc. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to this tool, so I won't get into it now. But I can also change the shape, of course, so I'll go with linear. And I can change the color, so let's go red to orange instead of red to white. And once I have the gradient colors I want, I'll click on the gradient itself and then hit the Enter key, and there's our stroke. Another benefit to this is I can come over here, create a new layer, and I can name this stroke 2 again, so we can do multiple strokes with this method. I'll drag this below, and I'll come over here and go to Select, Grow, and this will grow this based on its current size, so if I set this to 10, it'll grow this an additional 10 pixels, and I'll click OK. And now I'll come over and change the colors. So let's just go with this random color here and this random color. And once again, I can draw my gradient here. Let's swap the direction of this gradient. These colors don't look great, but you guys get the point. I'll hit the Enter key and there's our second stroke. So if I hit Control Shift A and hold Control and zoom in, you'll see the edges of this aren't super smooth. So they are kind of jagged there. That is one downside to this method, as you can see here as well. The other downside to this is you can really only create the circular edges here, so the rounded corners. So in other words, you can't really do the pointed corners or the beveled corners. Those are my three methods for creating a stroke around text in GIMP. Let me know which method was your favorite in the comments. But that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.